everybody, this is Amanda. I wanted to show you how to use a bokeh overlay in Photoshop. If you're dying to jump in with the multiple exposure um, folks and, and jump on that bandwagon, um, here's a very easy way to do it. I find it a lot easier than trying to shoot it in camera. Um, I shoot with a Nikon, and so I only get two shots, and those two shots have to be perfect, and that is just pretty difficult for me and very limiting. I'd much rather have a lot more control, so why not just do it in post-processing um, with a bokeh overlay? So um, here's a picture I just uh, finished and I was about to post. I'm gonna be really honest. I normally wouldn't add a bokeh overlay to this picture. Um, I just wouldn't. Um, it is a cool effect. I definitely can see, um, I mean, so many of you are using it in really creative ways. I normally wouldn't for this picture, but I just finished it. It's up on my Photoshop anyway, so I'm just gonna um, show you what it would look like here. There are two ways that you can add an overlay that I'm aware of. Um, the first way, you can go to File, and then you can do place embedded or place linked. Um, I usually go with place embedded um, and it brings up your finder here. You can go ahead and um, scroll through here and find which overlay you'd like to use, um, keeping in mind where the subjects are located in your frame um, so that you don't have to, I mean, obviously you can mask and brush off of them, but you kind of want to frame them with the bokeh. The other way that you can add an overlay is simply by opening up your finder, again, on a Mac. Um, and here I can see kind of a side-by-side, -side, and you can also do that uh, the way I did it before. Um, I can kind of move my windows around. Um, but what I'm going to look for here is... Um, something that would frame the picture pretty well. We were on a train, we were actually moving. Um, so I like this one up here. Um, it is gonna be on the right side of my frame. You can certainly rotate and flip these. Um, so don't feel like you're limited by how the overlay looks um, straight out of camera here. These are all raw files, DNGs. So you can certainly flip them and rotate them as you wish. But this one has a little bit of movement in it as well. Um, even though the, the lights here on the train were colored lights, I'm just going to kind of go with this color, um, just the plain white lights, and um, maybe frame uh, the right side of my, my picture here. So what I'm going to do is I've got it highlighted my, with my cursor or my mouse over here. I'm just going to drag it over and release it on top of the picture and it should just pop right on there. Now, because it's a RAW file or a DNG, it is gonna pull up Adobe Camera Raw. I normally don't um, play too much in Adobe Camera Raw. You can do a lot of different things here if you wanted to edit the RAW file. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the temperature a little bit so it's a little warmer. Um, if you remember in my, my image, um, it was kind of around sunset, not sunset, um, but it was just before golden hour, so it was very pretty and golden outside. So I kind of want the color temperature of the bokeh to match um, what I've got going on here in my picture. So I up the temperature a little bit. You can kind of go crazy with that if you want to. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, and again, you can do a bunch of other things here. Use hue, saturation, change some colors, whatever you wanna do. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do a side by side. There we go. So you can see um, what it looked like before and kind of how I changed it. And I don't know why this has the before and after switch, but it's definitely switched. I warmed up the temperature um, of the lights over here. So I'm going to click OK, and that's going to save my edits. And it's going to pop on there as a smart object. Okay, so from here, again, so many different things you can do. If you want to leave it just as it is, you would hit the enter or return key and it would be just, it would be placed just as it is. Um, you can move these handles all over the place. You can do all, all sorts of different things. One um, awesome trick if you want to maintain the dimension and you don't want to warp, um, and again, it doesn't really matter because these are already kind of motion blurred out, but if you don't want to warp what you're transforming, you can hold down the shift key while you move this up and it'll maintain um, the shape of the bokeh so it doesn't get too warped. Um, and again, I'm just holding down the shift key. Um, if you wanted to, you can rotate this or flip this. Um, let's see, I think you can go to edit, 
transform, you can rotate, you can rotate 180 degrees, you can turn it, you can flip it horizontally or vertically. Um, so a lot of different things that you can do here if you don't like the positioning of where the bokeh is in relation to your image. Um, so I know that, and what I'm gonna do actually real quick is I'm gonna change my blend mode over here I'm going to change it to either lighten or screen. That seems to work really well with an overlay. Let's see how it looks with screen. Okay, cool. So I've changed it. Now I can see where my subjects are in relation to my overlay. I'm just going to kind of move this over here a little bit. Um, how do I want this to look? I think I am going to kind of move this down a little bit. And like I said, normally wouldn't roll with the double exposure on this, but for sake of demonstration purposes, um, let's see. You know, just kind of giving them a little bit of framing. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and click return or enter and just kind of leave it like that. Yeah. I don't love it, but um, what I also could do if I wanted to frame them a little bit more is I could Command J to duplicate that layer. That's kind of interesting. I can kind of even move that around a little bit, um, which is kind of creates an interesting effect as well. Maybe I'll Command J again, and then I'm going to go up here to Edit, Transform. Let's go ahead and flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to move this. And if you don't have the move um, automatically selected, you can hit the V key and that will have the move um, selected for you. This is kind of interesting. So now you can see here at the bottom left hand corner, um, you know, that doesn't look very good. So what I might do is maybe I will go ahead, I'm going to hit. Uh, Command T to transform, and I'm going to pull that down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to hit Command minus minus, and I'm going to kind of pull up a little bit on this to kind of make it look how I want it to look. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm going to hit Enter or Return. And it's going to save that. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, again, I normally wouldn't do this, but um, I'm going to hit Command-0 to pull it up. Um, okay, interesting. You know, not really my bag, but, you know, for sake of demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and hover my little finger cursor here over the background layer. I'm going to... Um, I have my other finger on the Alt Option key. I'm going to press that down and I'm going to toggle on and off. And what this does is it turns off all of the above layers from my um, background layer. So I can see what it used to look like and now what it looks like. Used to look like, now what it looks like. Again, kind of looks a little bit funny to me, but I'm, again, it's a tutorial. I'm just going to roll with it. So. Now let's say that you have bokeh over a subject and you want to um, get rid of it or remove it from one of your subjects. Um, so in this case, what I could do um, is I could, for example, I could group these layers. Now I have multiple layers selected. Um, so let's say I add a mask here. Um, this mask is only going to apply to this layer. It's not going to apply to the previous layer. So for example, if I'm on this mask, I hit B for brush. Um, as you can see, my white brush is selected. I'm going to hit X to change it to a black brush. It's a real small brush, so I'm going to use my right bracket key. Um, now this overlay has all of the bokeh on the left side, so if I start doing this, nothing happens, right? Um, what I could do is I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this mask. If I want to affect all three of these layers, I'm going to shift, click, and then I'm going to hit Command G to make a group. And now I'm going to add a mask. I can do, I can either add a white mask so that everything is revealed, and then I can use a black brush to brush off the effect. So I'm going to add a layer mask. 
um, B for brush, I can see my black brush is selected, and then I can go ahead and remove whatever I want. You can see that happening. Um, my flow here is only 20%, so that's why it's going rather slowly. Um, I could change my flow um, real quickly and get rid of it more quickly. Um, or what I could do, I'm gonna get rid of the mask. Here it is again. Um, let's say that I wanted to brush the effect in, which is the opposite of brushing it off of my subjects. I just want to brush it in a little bit. What I could do is add a black mask and use a white brush. Um, so what I'm going to do is hold down Alt Option on my Mac and I'm going to click to add a mask. There it is, a black mask. I've got my brush tool selected, but I have a black brush selected. Black on black doesn't help you. So I'm going to hit the X um, the X key and that's going to switch to my white brush and that's going to reveal black conceals white reveals and so now what I can do is just brush the effect on where I want it and again I've got my flow at 90 so it's coming in rather strong um, I can always change that as well um, so there you go that's how to use masks as well again you can add a mask on each particular layer or you can group them and add a mask to the group layer. I hope that was at least helpful and you learned something, but go ahead and play around with it and you just might like the effect that you come up with. Thanks so much for watching.